Hey gang, we'll hear from the Ashland Fly Shop and thank you for joining us today for our Upper Rogue Salmon Fly Hatch Preview for the 2019 season. Grab yourself a beer, pour yourself a cup of coffee, sit back and let us take you through the ins and outs of this iconic hatch on the Upper Rogue. The Upper Rogue River between the dam on Lost Creek Reservoir and the town of Shady Cove has one of the most prolific salmon fly and stonefly hatches um, in the West. It's just uh, uh, has a mass of insects that come off like clockwork every year from around mid-May to about mid-June and it's it's just an amazing hatch. It's something that we as anglers look forward to all year. Um, if you're a beginner or a novice angler and you've never uh, seen a hatch like this, you owe it to yourself to try to make a couple of trips during the, sa the salmon fly hatch season to, to really just check it out. Um, it's, it's truly awesome to be a part of, to, to fish, and also just to witness on a natural level. It's, it's quite, quite amazing. Uh, if you're not from the Rogue Valley, there are two distinct sections that I'll reference throughout this preview. And one is called the Holy Water, which is really um, uh, exclusively a walk-in access, catch and release, uh, section that's managed for high quality trout fishing and that's from uh, the actual Lost Creek Dam down to the hatchery. It's about a half mile section. Uh, below that begins the main stem rogue um, where there's very little walk-in access and most of the salmon fly fishing, most of the fishing is going to be done out of a boat and that's going to go from the section that's the most productive will be from the hatchery uh, down to the town of Shady Cove. That's a very, very nice uh, section for fishing in there. So those are the two, the two sections that I'll reference most throughout the, throughout the stock. The salmon fly emergence is all based around water temperature. And so we're really fortunate um, on the Rogue to have very, very consistent water temps uh, year to year. Um, because it's so close to the outflow of Lost Creek Dam, uh, which is a bottom draw release dam, uh, we have very consistent water temps um, in this stretch of river where we see the bulk of the salmon flies. So they're going to start uh, further downstream, so we'll, st we'll start to see them first um, around the town of Shady Cove, which will have the, you know, the highest water temp at that time of year in that area, and then they'll kind of work their way um, up the river. The, the concentration of bugs will sort of work its way up which is perfect because it coincides with that May 22nd opener um, on the main stem Rogue. That's the trout opener for the Rogue, uh, May 22nd. The Holy Water's open all year. You can fish before May 22nd there, but that's when it opens uh, on the, on the uh, main stem Rogue. So um, that's what we can expect for the timing of the hatch, and that's why we go from that point right through, uh, right through about the second week of June. Uh, what to expect this season? Um, we've had really great snowpack this year. There's a lot of water uh, locked up there in the hills, and we get to that May window, we get those warm temps, it's going to start you know, pushing down and they'll release more water. So we'll, we'll see higher than average flows, I would say, but not really outside of the norm. Um, always a little bit harder to work around at the holy water with the, um, with the water coming out of the spillway, but it actually can be some advantages to that as well. Uh, the main stem rogue uh, below the spillway, business as usual down there. A lot of fishing out of the boat anyway, uh, kind of challenging bank fishing, but pretty much, pretty much a pretty average year. So now I want to share with you some tips for success that we've learned fishing the salmon fly hatch over the years. And we're going to jump into the main stem rogue there. This is a very simple fishing. My biggest tip is fish from a boat, cover a lot of water. You're going to be casting at the bank uh, mainly. And um, these fish are going to be wildly enthusiastic about uh, eating your fly. So um, you don't need to really roll through a lot of different flies, a lot of different bugs. The chubby Chernobyl really wins the day on this fishing for sure. If you are bank fishing, I would say move around a bit, move up and down the bank. You can certainly go back through water you've been through, um, but uh, work a section of raw water as opposed to a specific spot. Um, and then, as I stated in the beginning, you know, if you can fish from a boat, fish from a raft, it's going to be a huge advantage for fishing the main stem rogue. Now, the holy water is a very different story. Um, 
probably the biggest tip that I can give you is to fish a lot. Uh, try to get up there as many times as you can. The hatch has a lot of different faces as the bugs come out and sort of retreat depending on the weather and stuff. So you really want to try to get up there several times. Don't judge your experience by just going up there a single time. Um, we've seen uh, the fishing be challenging when there's a lot of bugs out and we've seen it be just outstanding when there's hardly any bugs around. So give yourself a few times up there. Um, try different times of the day. Uh, I've seen some great fishing happening in the morning up there when there's really no one up there. Not very many bugs out, but the fish are so tuned into the flies that they're really looking for them at those odd times of day. Um, don't just expect that evening time to be always be the peak. It's not always the case. Huge tip I need to give you for fish in the holy water is changing flies. You really, really want to rotate through your fly selection. Try some different types of bugs. Try some big foam flies that really splat and splay out on the water. Uh, try some really lightweight, airy flies that float nice and high and dry. Um, rotate through those bugs because the chances of being able to cover a big chunk of water on the holy water is not always the case. We're fairly confined to a shorter piece of water because we're sharing that section with, uh, with people a lot of times. So change your flies, uh, your desiccants, your floating, keep your flies floating high. Um, and that is uh, something we've seen to be really beneficial up there. Flies, flies, flies. Yes, it comes down to that. So main stem fishing, chubby Chernobyl all day long. Set it, forget it, you don't really even need another fly. Holy water fishing though, you, you really want to rotate some bugs. I do still think the chubby Chernobyl it should definitely be your top first or second fly. Excellent bug, comes in a few different colors which we carry here, a dark body, a light body. An excellent, excellent fly to have. Um, on the lightweight end, we really like the Norm Woods rubber legs. Awesome pattern, uh, works great year to year. Uh, rubber leg stimulator, also a fantastic fly. Uh, Schlatter's Rogue Foam Stone for a big kind of splatty foam bug is great. The 64 Impala, excellent, excellent fly. We've seen work great over the years. Um, and those are just to name a few. Uh, along with individual flies, we have put together a couple of selections here that include our absolute favorites. Um, we have those in the store and we'll have those during the hatch. So feel free to pop in and grab one of those or you can get them online as well. Let's talk tackle. Four, five, six weight rods are really gonna be the outstanding choices for up there. Five and sixes being, you know, probably the main ones. Um, nine footers, uh, moderate to fast action rods, really gonna do it for pushing out those big bugs. Uh, those are gonna be the sizes that, uh, that I would choose for sure. Uh, your standard weight forward floating fly line is gonna be good if you've got something that's a little punchier, a little more aggressive front taper, even overlined by one, that would probably be what I would choose. You know, a size six uh, salmon fly is a pretty big air resistant fly to wing out there. So, um, so a fly line that's got a little more punch to it is something to consider. Even your steelhead style lines can work really well. Uh, full floating lines, of course. Um, leaders, this is an important point. At the beginning of the hatch and really almost through most of it, I strongly recommend you use uh, 2X and 3X, starting with 10 or 8 pound. Uh, these fish are very aggressive on the strike. Um, they can break lightweight stuff like 4 or 5X. They can really break it, break your fly off on the strike really easily. And you know, when you're trying to land a bigger, heavier fish, they can break off pretty easy. So don't be afraid to use larger size leaders and tippet in the beginning. Uh, we see a lot of lost fish on five weight uh, tippet, excuse me, five X tippet sort of at the beginning of the hatch. Um, floatants, desiccants, gotta have them. You have to have uh, your, your gel floatants are really great as a first application and then moving right into your desiccant, your shake and bake style uh, floatant uh, for the remainder of the day's fishing to keep that fly floating high. Um, you really, really want to want to do that. A lot of times those fish won't even look at it unless it's really floating high. Sometimes they'll take it more submerged, but when it's up there floating high, it seems I've, I've seen uh, the best results from that. So you've got to have, uh, you know, your floating and your desiccant program worked out. 
A note about Trout's Bay. We love Trout's Bay. We recommend it. I think the Holy Water is an outstanding venue to fish dry flies on Trout's Bay, two, three, and four weight rods. The thing I want to make very clear about that is etiquette. You can take up a lot of space when you're fishing a Trout's Bay rod, and I think you want to be very aware of that when you're fishing up there. So if you've got the space, you've got a pretty open section to fish, I'm all about it. The Trout's Bay rod is a perfect, perfect rod to fish up there. You can really reach water comfortably that a lot of people can't necessarily reach. So I really encourage you to use it, but just be mindful of where you're fishing and who you're fishing around. Um, but yeah, that's a great spot for Trout's Bay. Well, that's what we got, folks. Uh, we really appreciate you tuning in. We're super stoked for the hatch. We look forward to it every year. It's a great, great fishing event. We hope you can get out there a bunch of times. Uh, and we, we really hope we run into you out there and say hello. It's a really fun community event up there. So uh, please come in the shop. We're loaded down with salmon flies. We're really happy to help uh, at any time, help you pick the right bugs and the right stuff. And uh, enjoy yourself out there. We'll see you up there.